this tree, I planted this in 1979. I don't even know what it is. Uh, at night, the bats live there. It just laden with bats. And you know the function of bats? 80% of all uh, seeds planted in the forest are not from birds, from bats. They're the best cross-pollinator of trees. I've realized that my use of the law is nothing more than planting a seed. And my Manila Bay case took 10 years to even get a simple decision to say government should clean up Manila Bay. Is it clean? Is it still dirty? Maybe it is, but maybe they're doing a little bit something. And in this children's case, for example, I wanted lagging in the Philippines to be banned all throughout. I mean, that's a pretty silly thing to ask. I mean, if you ask any lawyer, they will scratch it, which I did. They scratch their heads and say, no, you cannot do that. Why children? Why did some crazy lawyer think about naming children as the plaintiff? There were only 800,000 hectares left of virgin forest, old growth forest left in the Philippines. Logging was only being done in virgin forest, a throwback from the old days when there were so many virgin forests. And the government data showed itself that we were cutting them down, as in wiping them out, at the rate of 120,000 hectares per year. My son, my eldest son, was only three years old then. When he gets to be 10, there's not going to be anything left. And how can we do this? Is this the kind of world that my kids are going to see? I want to tell the story that these kids have the right to their future. Whether or not people act on it, that's beyond me. But we need to tell the story. And if I went to the media, first of all, nobody will listen to me. I was 34 years old, a uh, young lawyer who was just, just struggling with my family. The beauty about a legal action in court, it puts the issue on the table of discussion. And one way or another, there will be a resolution. Sooner or later, 10 years, 20 years, there will be a resolution. When I got the decision in the lower court that I lost, not just lost, but they didn't want me to tell a story, I said, oh, oh that's not nice. So I filed a petition to the Supreme Court just on the simple issue that do these kids have a right or none? If you say none, then it so happened that the case landed in a sympathetic court and landed on the table because they chose by raffle. It landed on a justice who is a you know, serious gardener and a lover of, of nature. It took 22 years, an entire generation. The most significant accomplishment as far as that case is concerned is not that I was able to file the case or th dream up the theory, but it was to be able to convince my wife to use my children as plaintiffs. <laughs> Try doing that to your wife. The tide is coming in. I show you a gift of nature. Come. We think that's debris, the seaweeds. No. This is premium fertilizer given to us by the sea. And yet, what do we do with it? We just throw it away. And then we make <laughs> fertilizer, we make uh, chemical fertilizer. I adopted it as my home when I was 20 years old. I lived out there in a very simple shack. 
1975. And I decided to live simply here in the island. This is my home. In 1994, quote-unquote development started creeping in, meaning foreigners started coming in, discovering the place, buying up land, skyrocketing the prices of land. I had the little foresight to see that if we allow this to happen all over, before you know it, we will not be able to see a little patch of beach left because everybody is going to fence it off. So what I did, I started uh, buying up the properties adjoining so that so we have a little coastline now. And when I got that, I said, what's, what's this going to be for? Is it going to be a resort? I said, no. So I decided, why don't we make this a, a learning center to learn uh, experientially uh, the ways of responsible living. We are trying to re-in, re, reinvigorate, rekindle the Filipino culture of caring, sharing, honesty. These cultural values of Filipinos are getting lost. 90% of the children in the Philippines don't know how to swim, yet they know where the mall is. That is why this little place that we have here is a little, almost like a rebellion to money. <laughs> Filipinos will see it as a wow, what a beautiful place. It doesn't look like the Philippines. And our answer is simple. That is what the Philippines is if you only took care of it. <laughs>